Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. A Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with her six-year-old Sunday school class. She got done on honor your father and your mother and asked the kids if there was a commandment that helped them in the way they ought to treat their brothers and sisters. Little Billy shot right up and said, you shall not kill. A lot of humor built around the Ten Commandments over thousands of years. A couple of years ago, uh, some Bethel friends found a T-shirt that they thought I just had to have, so they bought it for me. It's called the Ten Commandments Minnesota Style. There's a slide up there that you might be able to read some of them. It's a little hard. It's a picture of this shirt, but I will read these Ten Commandments for you, Minnesota Style. There's only one God, you know. Two, don't make that fish on your mantle an idol. Three, cussin' ain't Minnesota nice. Four, go to church even when you're up north. Five, honor your folks. Six, don't kill, catch and release. Seven, there is only one Lena for every Oli. No cheating. <laughs> Eight. If it ain't your lutefisk, don't take it. Nine. Don't be bragging about how much snow you shuffled. And ten. Keep your mind off your neighbor's hot dish. Well, Martin Luther had an opportunity 500 years ago to define the Ten Commandments. I guess we can allow some Minnesotans a swipe at it in our day. A week ago, you heard that there are two sections or two tables of the law. The first table concerning our relationship with God. The second table concerning our relationship with our neighbor. Today, we leap right into that second table, Commandments 4 through 8. Next Saturday and Sunday, Pastor Anjanette will finish out this four-week series on the Ten Commandments with Commandments 9 and 10. You also heard last week that these commandments are given not by a God who is angry with us, who wants to make our life miserable, but a God who wants to protect us, who wants to give us ways in which we can live in good and right relationship with God and with our neighbor. The opposite of law is not freedom. The opposite of law is anarchy. I doubt there's anybody here who wants to live in the state of anarchy, a state of no laws. That would be the most frightening and constricting way to live. Instead, laws and freedom can go hand in hand. For instance, think again of these commandments as a fence that will protect us. Many of you take your young children to daycare centers. The outdoor play area of a daycare center is always surrounded by a fence. The teacher can release the children into this play area and they are free to do whatever they want within the fence. Now consider a little, a little field trip outside the fence, walking to some place in the community. Will the children have the same freedom that they had inside the fence? Will not the teachers make that gr a group of children hang on to a rope as they walk along the sidewalk? Won't the adults be looking at every kid to make sure there's not one student who strays away from the group? Because there is no fence, there is the illusion of freedom. The truth is far different. So with that idea of law being a protective fence around us. Let's look at the commandments we have designed for us today, four through eight. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill, commit adultery, steal, or bear false witness. Those of us from Bethel, that large group who traveled to Israel earlier this month, we're spending a lot of time in the old city of Jerusalem, 
and places like the Mount of Olives where tourists are in abundance. And if there are tourists in abundance, there are people who want to make money off of those tourists. Some of them do that legally by selling product. Some of them do that illegally. And every time we were to go into one of those congested areas, our guide was very explicit. Do not take a wallet. Do not take a purse. Do not take more cash than you will need for the hours that we will be in this place. Do not take credit cards. Do not take your passport. Don't carry a bag unless you absolutely have to. We had that memorized. Contrast that with this past Thursday, three days ago. I was in a very congested area walking at Thursdays on 1st in Rochester. People bumping into me all the time. And I had a flashback to all those bodies in Israel. And all of a sudden I realized I have my wallet on me. I have a credit card. I'm wearing an exposed cell phone on on my hip. I, I have more cash than I need for that hour. And I felt entirely safe. Felt safe because we have a system of laws and a legal system. People who buy and large follow those laws. It's not like pickpockets are unheard of in our part of the world. But for the most part, we honor each other's property. And so we live in the freedom of being able to carry what we want. A little less than one week ago, 48 Christians were killed in Kenya by al-Shabaab, the al-Qaeda branch of terrorists in Somalia. These killings evidently were done in retribution for the Kenyan forces that are in Somalia. The Kenyans were asked if they, what their religion was. If they said Christian, they were shot. This is anarchy. We have laws in our country, laws that promote freedom within our country. Our laws are not perfect. We are not perfect. But I suspect that most of us will go to our homes today and we will feel very secure that there's not going to be someone showing up with a gun to kill us because we are a Christian. I feel safe wearing a cross to this house of worship. You are free to come and go in this house of worship whenever and how often you like. Because we have a set of laws in which we live, we enjoy freedom that those people who live in anarchy do not have. We have had far too many funerals at Bethel here in 2014, though the pace of those funerals has slowed down considerably in the summer. Many or most of those people who have died have left behind spouses who survive. Some of those spouses are here at this worship service. We pastors have heard your stories. We have grieved with you. We have heard how you worked together for 50 or 60 or 70 years. We have heard how you cared for each other, particularly in the last months or years, perhaps when abilities were taken away from your partner. We have heard how it was that you married so long ago and you didn't have two nickels to rub together. Oh, you probably didn't become rich, but you carved out a nice life for yourselves. But most of all, most of all, we have heard of your love and your faithfulness to each other. We have heard how it is that you could always depend on the other, that there was always someone on your side. There was someone who would rejoice with you when there was celebration and one who would mourn with you over loss. There was one over whom you never had any concern because of the love and the faithfulness that you shared. Martin Luther defines the sixth commandment in this way. We are to fear and love God so that in matters of sex, our words and conduct are pure and honorable, and husband and wife love and respect each other. It is a commandment to be sure, but it is a commandment born out of love so that we can live in the joy and the freedom of relationship.
God has given us laws so that we can live in right relationship with God and right relationship with our neighbor. Because we live within those commandments, we have freedoms that those people who do not live according to the commandments do not have. Call it anarchy or maybe even call it martial law. Because for the most part, most of us do respect the goods of others, we don't worry about our picnic tables being stolen or our money being taken from us day by day. Because we respect life, we expect that we are going to arrive home safely after this worship service. Because we have a protective fence built around us, we are safe so that we don't wander into areas that will provide only unhappiness and wickedness. A father reprimanded his young boy for his continued unruliness. The boy rebelled even further, went and collected some clothing, his teddy bear, and some money, his piggy bank, and proudly announced to his father, I am running away from home. The father thought about this logically for a minute and, and said to his son, uh, when you get hungry, what are you going to do? When the boy said, I will come home and get something to eat. <laughs> he said, well, when you run out of money, what are you going to do? Defiantly, the boy said, I will come home and I will get some money. The father tried a third time. When your clothes get dirty, what are you going to do? And the boy answered, I will come home and mommy will wash them for me. The father thought to himself for a minute and said, this boy isn't running away from home. He's preparing for college. <laughs> uh. We rebel. We threaten to run away. But we always come home. We come home to a God who provides safety and freedom within the laws that bring life to us. May we always live in the freedom of God's law. May we rejoice in the love of God's grace. Amen. Hymn number 810, please rise and